Welcome back everybody, I'm the Redstone Warper here, and as you can see from the intro, the Gen 3 screen display is now able to draw two sets of lines at the same time, which is pretty cool. Uh, the way we're doing this is actually just being driven by four different uh, binary counters that count through the X and Y directions for both of the modules. Um, so while it displays slightly slower than the Gen 2 because it's able to write two sets of lines at the same time, it is actually much faster. And when I say that it's a little bit slower, it's by like, I think two ticks slower. And technically it does get, uh, I believe it's like two ticks slower per um, module here that we have. So the Gen 3 uh, 16 by 16 display is based very heavily on the Gen 2, which of course is based on the Gen 1. Uh, it has the same pixel system for writing uh, for actually controlling the sets of pixels. It also has the same internal memory design as well. The main difference comes from the XY decoders here at the back, which this screen has two of them. Uh, built by Wild Engineering, and I'll leave a link to his channel down below, and possibly a link to the video where he actually describes these and shows you how to build these. The way these XY decoders work is that you have the Y address that comes in through this bus, and you have the X address coming through this bus, which I just have connected up to binary adders to create the cool animation that you are seeing at the beginning. The way these work, and we're just going to come look at the top one because it's going to be the easiest to see, as you can, as we have our vertical bus comes through here to create the AND gate for here. And so basically each signal pumps into this comparator and subtracting mode, which then subtracts out 14 uh, obviously minus 15 equals zero. Uh, so as long as one or both of these signals is on, it will not allow the output to propagate through to the next pixel. So here you can see that the Y axis is turned off, which means even though the X axis is currently on, you can't send a signal to the screen. Now, if we were to turn this off, now it can write to the screen because now zero, 14 minus zero is 14, which then gets pumped through the barrel into here, which then continues to write the pixel. This design is extremely clever as it allows us to not only control each individual pixel, but we can also pass a signal from our previous one so that we can write two sets to the screen at the same time. Now this is done with a little bit of witchcraft where we can pass a signal from this signal line to the comparator over here using this repeater, but we can also send the signal from this comparator through powering this barrel so that it can also activate that pixel. The way this works is by using these barrels to generate a signal strength of 14 again. We put this comparator in subtract mode so this is always subtracting 14 from whatever the input is. So the only way to pass the signal through this is by sending a signal strength of 15 which is done by this repeater. If we grab a redstone block real quick to just give us our input, we can now see that the signal propagates all the way through. The other, the way this works without contaminating our line here is if we were to again turn this off, you can see that while this redstone dust is powered, because it's powered with a signal strength one, it doesn't have enough strength to enter with the signal lines on either side of this, allowing us to send a signal through these blocks and over top of them without interfering with each other. 
And of course, this is signal strength one because it's being powered by this comparator, which then goes into the repeater so that it can then propagate through the barrel. Again, this brilliant design is by Wild Engineering and there'll be a link to his channel down below. In my previous screen video, I also introduced the concept of this pixel decoder, which then allows you to send signals and write to a very specific pixel on the screen. And this I've now wired up and bust fully. So if you remember from the last time we looked at it, we used these rails that get bud powered whenever you press it. So let's do this pixel to extend these two pistons and then using these sets of rails to decode the X and Y direction. But of course, because the rails do not extend all the way across, that's why we have to add two different sets of signals together. So for the Y signal, what we have done is we put these observers here in the middle so that it can detect no matter how far away it is. And then we just kind of redirect the signal under here into this decoder right here, or no, this encoder. What this does is it uses the rails that get powered based on which one of these it is to then encode binary data onto these rails down below, which then get observed by these observers so that we can then transfer that into the bus for the system, which does some really funky kind of ugly stuff here and goes into the decoder or into the screen. Uh, we also do the same thing for the, or for the horizontal directions here. We actually do this on both sides because of just the way this is laid out. And so we have two of these, which then merge together over here. So this side streams in this way, powering the rails here, and this one powers the rails here, so that the signal can then propagate down this way and then enter into the horizontal bus right here. So as you can see, the pixel that we pressed earlier has lit up on the screen. If we want to go like to this top one, we can press that. It is a little bit slow and it could definitely be, uh, the speed can definitely be improved by trying to minimize how much rails we use because redstone does travel farther. Um, and there's some funky resetting stuff that we do that could be avoided as well in future design. But we can actually press these quite quickly and as they reset, we can continue pressing them and we can now begin to overwrite our design, lighting up all the pixels that we pressed here. And of course, it still has the same screen clearing functionality that we have right here. So that's all that I have for you today. Make sure to leave a like, maybe comment down below. And if you have any questions, let me know and I'll try to answer them in one of my next screen videos. Thanks for watching. And for any of you who watched to the very end of the videos, here's a sneak peek of what might be in the next video.